My name is Terry Lynch. I'm with Oregon Ecology. Um, I found myself searching for a passageway one day. And that passageway goes right across the complete section of the Cascades, which I'm sitting in front of at the moment. On top of one peak. I want to make sure that everybody sees the type of things that we find in the process of research is involved. I have located a couple that's sitting here on the top of Blind Peak. She's facing south. Hmm, she's looking north. The middle, Cascadia Guides, a Let's production in conjunction with Alien Strand Films. On my Area 51 line, you're on the air. Hello. Hello, Art. Yes. Hi. Um, I, 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 I don't have a whole lot of uh, time. Um, well, look, let's begin yeah. by finding out whether you're using this line properly or not. Uh, area, area 51. Yeah, um, that's right. Were you an employee or are you now? Uh, I, a former employee. Former um, employee. I, I, I was let go on a medical discharge about a week ago. And... And... <laughs> <laughs> I've I kind of been running a, across the country. Um, oh man, I don't know where to start. They're they're uh, they're, they're gonna um, they'll triangulate on this position really really soon. So um, you can't spend a lot of time on the phone. So give us t something quick. Okay. Um. Um. Okay. What well, what we're thinking of as as aliens are they're uh, they're they're extra dimensional beings that. An earlier precursor of the um, space program made contact with. Uh, they they are not what they claim to be. Uh, they have infiltrated a lot of uh, uh, a lot of aspects of, of of the military establishment, particularly the Area 51. Uh, the, the disasters that are coming. They the, the military. I'm sorry, the, the government knows about them, and th there's a lot of safe areas in this world that they could begin moving the population to now, Art. But they're <laughs> not doing, they're not doing anything. They are not, they want the major population centers wiped out <laughs> so that the, the few that are left will be more easily controllable. Discharge. Uh, <laughs> I, I started getting. Well, this was certainly interesting. We are now on a backup system, everybody. A backup system. And uh, that one caller that I had on the air. <laughs> I guess we were about in the middle of his transmission, his telephone call, which was a, one of the strangest ones I've ever had, and the entire transmitting system by satellite went down here, and we were notified we were off the air, and it would appear to be from this end, and some sort of uh, massive transmit failure, so we are now using a backup system to be on the air, and not that I would normally believe this kind of thing, mind you, but... I can't help but wonder if somebody, somebody zapped us in some way. Uh, we'll find out. East to the right. You know, there's, a, there's sort of a, a nexus of disinformation and auto, automatic truth factor that gets associated with anything UFO and ET. And that's been done since the 1950s by the CIA 
and it's been very effective. So a lot of people don't want to lose their respectability by touching the UFO issue. <clears throat> That's just true. I mean, it's a psychological warfare. It's the term used in the CIA document I have from 1953. Alien Strand Podcast. Episode of Alien Strand Podcast. I'm your host, Donald Desma. A welcome to today's show. Yeah. So today is Christmas. We are December 25th, 2022. Finishing up the year already, so we're getting ready for 2023. So I'm glad that you guys are here today. You're sticking around and uh, able to catch this new podcast today. I'm very excited to get this podcast out to you guys because that's what I love to do. I love to uh, tell these stories to you guys as they come out daily. Now, if you can, you can catch us on 24, 25, 26 platforms, uh, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Deezer, uh, you know, Tumblr, YouTube, we're everywhere, Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter, we're all over the place, so you can catch our podcasts everywhere and our information, so a lot of our information actually goes to uh, our alien strand there on Facebook, so you have a chance, go to our Facebook page there, check it out, and you'll see a lot of our info, new videos as they come out, right? I mean, we try to get everything out to you guys as much as possible uh, on a daily basis, of course, so, you know, uh, if if you can, uh, if you haven't, Check out our past podcast. You know, uh, I had number 79 there here with Mr. Anibal Caballero. Number 80, I call that one 1952. That was a really good one. Um, 19, uh, and then uh, number 81 with Mr. Terry Lynch. Uh, we we actually kind of broke down some UFOs there. And we talked about a lot of that stuff. So, uh, and then we had number 82. Uh, uh, I call that one Skyward. That was in uh, with Miss uh, Cindy Grigsby there in, in Portageville, Missouri. Uh, so, if you guys had a chance... Go to our YouTube channel. You know, subscribe. Hit a like and subscribe there. You know, we go live a lot of times now. Um, we starting to do that now because we want to have uh, some video content to show you guys. Too. We just threw out one today, as a matter of fact, uh, on YouTube. So if you have a chance, go check out those videos. Uh, I do... Uh, talk a little bit in the beginning like I do in the podcast, but I do put out uh, content as well. I put out some new videos that have been out there that just came out, and uh, I kind of break those down a little bit, and, and we go through it together as you see uh, the the amazing footage that everybody has caught out there. Now, if you're new to ufology, well, welcome. Welcome to ufology. You know, um, it's never too late to learn. Uh, it's just like anything else. Like It's just like going to school, right? I mean, it's never too late to get a degree, right? And ufology isn't something that you're going to find in school or anything like that. These are things that you learn and you learn from other folks out there because there's people out there that are teaching these things to us. Like, of course, Terry Lynch, uh, you know, we've got Mr. Chris Hamill there in in, uh, in Australia, right? Uh, we got Mr. Anibal Caballero there in, in Colorado. We got people, we got uh, Arizona's backyard there in Arizona, of course. Check him out. He's got some really good stuff that he puts out there, you know, to you guys. And, and I just want to make sure that you guys, these people get recognition for what they deserve. Shauna Gilmer, uh, she does have, she's an administrative in a lot of groups too. She throws out a lot of good content, uh, you know, as it comes out. So please, if you go to their page, 
pages. Uh, you'll find them there on uh, the Oregon Ufology Research Team there with uh, Mr. Terry Lynch. You know, you'll be able to uh, sign up with his group. And, you know, uh, please do not troll on these pages, on none of these pages, because they're very strict about those things. So am I on Alien Strand. So if you guys go on our pages, be courteous, you know, be open with your uh, comments. They can be open as long as they're not disrespectful to others or anyone else or even to the page. So because we will take you off right away if you get disrespectful okay because it's a learning process and we take this job very very seriously as far as ufology because we want to teach you guys and show the world of what we're catching on a daily basis not just us but the folks like you out there that are listening out there in radio land you know and and listening in your vehicles while you drive or or your truck driver let's say thank you guys too for being out there and 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 trucking all over uh, the united states and everywhere and just getting this these supplies out to everybody you know when we need them I, we appreciate you guys if you guys weren't out there we couldn't do it without you now you know, uh, as far as everyone else, it's the same thing. But, you know, in ufology, you know, we want to make sure that you're safe when you're driving. You know, uh, keep your keep your eyes on the road. If you, if you see something in the sky, pull over. You know, um, just kind of do it at your own discretion. Open the window. Pull over. Stop. You know, take your video. Take your picture. Please turn your phone sideways. Do not hold it straight up and down because... When it's time for us or people out there that don't want to share it on a larger scale, in other words, to a larger crowd with millions of people, uh, we want to see a wider aspect ratio. In other words, we want it to be a 16 by 9, a wider shot. Okay? So if you can, please turn your phones sideways when you record so that we are able to catch a wider uh, sense of what you're seeing in the sky or on the ground. You know, uh, there's a lot of folks out there that catch these uh, crafts. On the ground as well. So, um, speaking of, uh, you know, I have a good friend out there in the United Kingdom. His name is Paul Wilburn. He helps Alien Strand a whole bunch with what we do out there, and he's always spreading the good stuff of Alien Strand for the people in UK. Now, there's a page out there. Uh, it's called They Have Landed. So, if you go check them out, uh, Joe King and um, uh, this guy's named Alec. He's the one that's catching all these crafts in the sky you know over there over a mountain right and they're able to uh post this on their group site so i believe it's like a private site in a sense uh but you know it's they have the information as they're putting it out you know his name's alex smith so he's able to catch a lot of these uh, crafts are the, they're, as they're coming off the mountain. So they're putting a big thing together with those two guys. Uh, I've been talking with them lately, and you know what? They have a lot of great information on their sites. Check them out. It's called They Have Landed. Um, I believe Mr. Joe King's in charge of that page. Uh, you know, and just tell them Alien Strand sent you. Check it out. Be courteous and just... These guys give it a lot of amazing information on ufology, right? And about uh, space, planets, everything that's out there. They're putting it out as well. So, you know, uh, there's a story out there that, you know, a lot of things do happen in the United Kingdom. Um, you know, and I'm a firm believer that, that there's a lot of these crafts out there and, and it happens for a reason, right? why they go to these locations or why they they're spotted in so many um areas especially the same area right um and it's like a hot spot right so if you saw my last podcast with uh, miss it's catch it on youtube i actually show a map right of hot spots in the United States who where there's a lot of activity in that area in that general area so it's usually on the east coast or on the west coast of the United States now United Kingdom, you know, they they have a lot of sightings as well, you know, and uh, it's been going on through years and years and years. So they're just like here in the United States. They have their own uh, government programs, their, uh, you know, space programs, everything that we have here. They basically uh, mirror everything. So um, what happens with ufology over there happens the same way here. Right. So it's the same process. And there's a story. It happened February 2016. And it happened in a small town, Hendrick. And it's just outside Cardiff Wells. 
And in this story, there's going to be a lot of information of what a possible sighting, of course, multiple sightings, and a possible UFO crash, right? So when we hear that terminology, UFO crash, what's the first thing you think of is Roswell. The first one that was openly discussed. But you don't hear too many stories of UFO crashes. You always hear the UFO sightings or the the UFO encounters or the UFO uh, alien or extraterrestrial abductions, right? But in this story, 2016 suggests that UFO was downed by a military aircraft. In other words, it was possibly shot down, thinking it was a sort of like a battle of some sort. You know, and these things happen on a daily basis. Uh, sometimes there's there's going to be a lot of hush-hush where you're not going to hear about these things. The story has multiple witnesses various locations and they all share similar details about this uh, UFO uh, visual and a pop crash in the United Kingdom so this all took place in the middle of the night around 2 a.m. Strange, you know, events started unfolding around this small town, Pintrick. So people started noticing these lights just coming out of the sky. Some people just claimed that it was possibly maybe helicopters, right? That were over some folks saw them on nearby fields a lot of the witnesses there were in a sense kind of disturbed witnessing right a lot of them called the local police department. One caller that just said, hey, helicopter, it's flying very low. Had come around our home about seven or eight times. We're still not certain of it, said police helicopter we got a closer look we noticed that it wasn't a police helicopter almost like a big double engine one he said two a.m another caller called in saying something is causing my house to shake Another caller called in and said they were convinced that something had hit their chimney of their home. They said there was a lot of loud bangs. Which at 2 a.m. would probably put the fear of God in you if you're asleep and something's waking you up. 2 a.m. with some loud bangs on your chimney or over your home. So as the noise or the bangs got louder, more people started peering out of their homes. They started walking out into their yards, looking up at the sky.
many had reported of seeing multiple military vehicles the ground. Thinking that it was possibly a military training drill of some sort. It was involving military came out and said later they were conducting a exercise out there called Million. That nothing awkward took place. But there was one witness. Her name was Kaz Clark. I can categorically state this was no exercise. said she had seen and heard noises and saw the strange lights coming from the fields behind her house. And that's what captured her attention, right, at first. When she looked up, she says, she saw something that looked like a pyramid-shaped object moving overhead. So at this point, I could see that that was no exercise that they were doing. She later told a newspaper. I'm willing to take a lie detector test anywhere for anyone about what I saw. What I saw was not military aircraft. But a genuine UFO to terrestrial craft from another world. Mark even stated military knew that they were coming. They had a spotter out there for two days, she says. She says it's like they were anticipating this event. She even said her neighbor, Dave, noticed the second plane would arrive and then it would take over, right? Circling the same route. The reason she's able to explain this story very well and what she saw is because when they started seeing these planes circle, they decided to camp out there that first day. Camped out in the field next to where they were circling on the 25th going into the 26th February said first notice that a red light would appear over the trees She says it looked amazing. Claimed that the object came through a black veil into our world. A 
It didn't come down from the reaches of space. In other words, it didn't come out from our space, our atmosphere, down onto the planet. It peered. Don't understand it. But it possibly came from a portal. Gateway, she says. We saw. There's a fellow researcher named by Gary Jones. Who he stated the same thing. From a portal in the sky because he investigated everyone that saw this and got all their information. He says this thing came down from, like a portal from a portal in the sky when it was fully upright. Clark even said fired a bright green object of some sort out of the top of it like a big bright green star so while there Clark and her neighbor are sitting there watching this unfold before their eyes said at one point she was thinking that the object was about to land he saw the bottom of this craft something ejected like a hand of lightning she goes not thin like lightning but thick like fingers I was so fixated on the bottom of this craft. And then Dave witnessed further more green orbs being ejected from the top of this object. At one point they said three military aircraft helicopters arrived. They are flying extremely low. Passed overhead. Where we were standing, she says. They were followed. Two bizarre, barrel-shaped, silent objects. They were approximately the size of a small car. So we're looking at two cylindrical objects following these helicopters from behind. She says they were red in color and they appeared to be moving. She says they appeared to be turning on itself like a cake mixture being stirred. In other words, what they're seeing is this craft look like it's biological. It's taking shape, it's taking form as it's flying. Mark said, one of these crafts stopped 20 feet away from where we were standing. She raised her hand and waved at the object. This is while it, it, it hovered over them. She says it scanned me before it moved away. Later on, Clark stated that her hair had turned white within 24 hours after being scanned like that. She was hit with a beam. says these objects were moving in different directions as they made their way back to the home. So in other words, they started seeing this 
event unfold and once it was starting to finish they looked like it was going to fade out like they were done they started walking back towards their home she says we only walked about 30 seconds when we turned around and walked home and then they heard a huge explosion It said it shook the ground, shook, it felt like it shook the night, how loud it was. It said this explosion was so big, so loud, that it shook people and awakened them out of their beds. There were multiple different kinds of aircraft, military aircraft, in the air, all heavily armed battle vehicles. It says these things are real. Our military knows they're real. After that event took place, Clark decided to start posting on social media about it. Including on the whale's online site. Soon later, a mystery person or somebody of the unknown contacted her. She agreed to meet this person and discuss the matter of what she witnessed. person asked her bluntly she was worried about what might happen to her or the members of her family and if she was ever threatened would also explain why they had no photographs or taken any video footage. She claimed and several other people tried. But she says all of our phones were dead. Or that they were too close to this UFO that it drained their batteries. And I'm not just talking about Clark and Dave. Other people that were in the vicinity unknown to each other that these events were taking place under their noses, literally. They all tried to film this, but all their phones were dead. She claims that she knows these things are real. And the military actively pursuing these things and shot it down. There was another witness. It's Mike Henbury. Claimed to have witnessed a red pulsing light. Or noticing two further lights that made a triangular formation, he says. Orbs emerged from this craft. Red, then turned green. It says they were dancing and molding. To one another and pulsing from red to green very slowly. Other witnesses also noticed that these objects appeared out of nowhere. 
They all said it was like a kind of a portal. That once these helicopters arrived, the object moved towards the wooded area. They said that this object was turning on its axis and it appeared to wanting to land just by other witnesses said then the lights went out and a shorter time later the explosion rang out Later on, the next day, Clark went out there to the wooded area, or several days later, and they recall they found like a 60-foot tree that had been snapped in half in the middle of the trunk. She said, these snapped trees went on as far as my eye could see. They walked through the area of these damaged trees. Eventually, went up to the impact area. So that we could see numerous scrapings. Uh, it looked like strange burn marks on the ground surrounding the trees. They started noticing a smell. That it was a pungent kind of smell. Then they said weeks later, after this thing that happened, a team of field researchers arrived, set up a temporary campsite by this location. They were investigating the whole incident, she says. They are using some kind of technological device. They said it almost looked like an extremely large laptop. They were doing a fingertip search. in the flight path of this pyramid shaped craft they said they would walk by us but wouldn't say a word they would just watch us she said they she was describing them as having a spooky behavior like cultish she says It said that the radiation levels were a 1.2 EMF, which is a safe range, right? Which is between 0.2 and 0.4. But this EMF was 1.2, so it was a little bit above safe range. They said that the levels remained high till 2021. This is four years. So there was another witness it's at a Royal Glamorgan Hospital, it was on duty nurse at the time of the event. He says, I, I heard a real loud explosion. Right outside the hospital. It was like after 2 a.m. So was then I heard a second explosion which sounded a little further away. And there was a smell of sulfur all around. So the smell of sulfur 
is usually indicated by a lot of people that are in close proximities of these extraterrestrial vehicles that land and they actually get to approach these vehicles. So this is the smell that they're smelling, like a rotten egg, sulfur, you know, you, you know what it smells like. Match being lit. Uh, it's just, it has that smell. This is reported by a lot of folks that have come close to these crafts, not just this one. With the nurses, she didn't believe that it was a military exercise at all. Because all the local roads were closed. At the hospital, a lot of the, the patients were awakened in their beds. Because they saw, like, a thick black smoke. Crash site. And, the, and it was going through the vents and in the windows of the building. She said even multiple car alarms outside were going off in the area. So, you know, this Gary Jones investigator went out and, you know, investigated and did a request out there. That's where he found out that it was called a, an exercise called chameleon. But he had questions. He said, why were the Smilog Woods closed to the public during this time of the 26th of 2016? What ex exactly was the reason for the military to be in those woods during this time on the 25th, on the 6th of 2016 at 2 a.m.? Whose authority was it to be close to the woods to the public during this time? And why were the roads closed down in the areas around the Smilog? during the 25th and the 26th of 2016. In other words, these are all the questions he was asking, right? Why? I do these military exercises at 2 o'clock in the morning by these people's homes if it was a military exercise. As we all know, probably not. So later, later on, he gets a request back that the information fell into the Section 26 category, which means it's not in the public's interest. Essentially, it is classified. This is what they... And there were several reports in the same month, not just that one. Edinburgh, Scotland. He was driving when his dash cam captured a glow object hovering motorway. Claim these lights did not seem to be moving. They just sat in the sky where they were. So whatever I saw was definitely not a plane. Also, in the UK, a 65-year-old John McDonald claimed that a spaceship hovered his home for several minutes before taking off.
around the same time in Enfield, London. They managed to uh, capture several minutes of footage out of their window. seemed to be an object larger than a star. But when they zoomed in on it, it seemed to be changing shape. At first they thought it was a helicopter, but then they said, no. I'd never seen a helicopter dismantle itself and reattach itself in midair. Never before. There's always a lot of things happening there, not just in the United States, but all over the world, especially there in the UK. Many stories, many, many stories there of UFOs, UFO sightings from all over the world. I was talking about Alex Smith earlier. I mean, he's from the UK. He's capturing these crafts on a daily basis, right? You know, and he's actually zooming in. He's got this awesome zoom lens and he's capturing a lot of these crafts uh, going on the side of that mountain. It almost looks like they're looking for something, extracting something. They're walking around that general area. He's captured photos video of strange looking uh, humanoid looking creatures even human looking people almost disfigured in a sense but someone on uh, November of 22nd this year actually sent a letter about the Patrick incident And it said, the letter said, this was their return letter because they asked about the incident and wanted to know more about it through the go. And it said, thank you for your request, which I have received on November 7th, 2022. You asked for the information held by the Welsh government in relation of the UFO incident in Pentrick in 2016. This is their response. Following a search of our paper and electronic records, I've established that information you require is not held by the Welsh government. And if you are dissatisfied with the Welsh government handling your request, you can ask for an internal review within 40 working days of this date. Yada yada. at the very end of this letter it says however please note that the commissioner will not normally investigate a complaint until it's been through our own internal review process yours sincerely well, what does that tell you it sounds to me like it's nobody's concern keep it out of the public eye my understanding is why do our governments do this and involve themselves to cover everything up that when there's multiple, multiple witnesses, man, just be honest, be truth about it. Yeah, we shot something down. Yeah, we don't know what it is. We're investigating it. It might be a spacecraft. It might be a satellite. Give us something. Don't lie and just push it to the side. That just makes it more suspicious to us, right? You know, at least at Roswell, first they said, well, it was a UFO. And then after this, that, they said, well, it was a balloon. So it got, the story got changed. But at least they gave you something to go on, right? This one doesn't give you anything. It just happened, case closed, pick up all the pieces, be done with it, everybody shut up. This is why we need to report everything that we see to our local databases on 
mythology. Me and Mr. Terry Lynch talk about this on our documentary, The Middle, and we talk about this while we're on live podcasts all the time. Because you have to remember, report something like this. There's data. There's a lot of investigators that go out there and follow this data. They create maps. They create, you know, just the geography of the area, trying to figure out, okay, why? Why? This is a hot spot. Many reports in this area. You know, we need to know this information. But if you do see craft in the sky or something of the unknown, report it. Report it to one of your local UFO uh, reporting places, you know? They'll have it on paper, black and white. You can't go wrong with black and white. Having it on a piece of paper in data. This story was very interesting, but what got my attention was had way too many witnesses to be denied of what it was. Most people saw this as a triangular craft trying to land. Was this a craft of an unworldly nature? Was this extraterrestrial? Did it come in from a different dimension? Did they know this was going to happen? These are the questions. Story of 2016. These are the questions we should always ask every day. Because as ufologists, even as a regular concerned citizen, we need to know what's in the air. We need to know what's coming off of these things. We need to know if it's dangerous. We need to know if the radiation is so toxic that it'll kill you. Which we have heard many stories of happening to folks, sometimes within six months, sometimes within two years. They all end up getting cancer and dying because they're too close to this craft getting high levels of radiation. Do believe that Bob Lazar was right using element 115, highly radioactive element. Proof is in the pudding. It's on the ground. They're taking these readings. We all need to be aware of our surroundings. Well, hope you guys enjoyed this podcast today as I did. Very informative. I really, really enjoyed telling this story. Actually, one of my favorites. You know, you can catch us on 26, 27 platforms. Spotify, iHeartRadio. You can even ask Alexa. We're all over the place. So just any podcast platform that you have, just search Alien Strand. If you can, check out our YouTube page. Hit us a like, a subscribe. Check out our videos that we put out daily uh, or weekly, actually. And uh, give us a like, hit a subscribe. Remember, we get a 1,000 subscribers. We're able to put our movie up there. And then once we get that movie done, we're working on the second movie, part two. That way, we will already have a platform already for ourselves to put it on instead of waiting all this time for distributors, right? We already have it ready to go for you guys. I really enjoyed this podcast today. You know, Merry Christmas from Alien Strand, from the Alien Strand family. 
you know, we just love putting out this content out to you. Uh, like I said, be ready because we're probably going to have Mr. Terry Lynch again as we break down some more uh, UFO videos. Uh, check us out on our YouTube page. So we're on live on YouTube. Once we go live, we're out live on YouTube, we're live on Facebook, and we're live on Twitch. So check us out there as we go live, all those three places. So look for Alien Strand, and, uh, you know, click us a like, subscribe, you know, check it out. Uh, check out our, all our other videos that we have on there. And, uh, you know, we love getting the content out to you guys, you know, because we appreciate each and every one of you. You're very important to us. So until then, you know, you guys have yourselves a good day. Have yourselves a good evening, and have yourselves a good night. Executives, Coastal Band, and Corpus Christi, Texas. And you're listening to the Alien Strand Podcast with Donald Ledesma. Buying or selling, visit me at kellygreenrealtor.com or visit me on my Facebook page, Kelly Green Realtor. See you there. You know, there's a, there's sort of a, a nexus of disinformation and all the automatic tooth factor that gets associated with anything UFO and ET. And that's been done since the 1950s by the CIA, and it's been very effective. So a lot of people don't want to lose their respectability by touching the UFO issue. <clears throat> that's just true. I mean, it's a psychological warfare is the term used in the CIA document I have from 1953.